today is August 18, 2023. The time is 3.36 p.m. And the title of this video is Adenovirus Vector Technology. Adenovirus Vector Technology. This is a very dangerous technology. Jesse Gelsinger was in a safety study with a, a technology using a, a adenovirus vector technology. He was part of this safety study for adenovirus vector technology. And he took, he was given the highest dose of this um, technology, this therapy using adenovirus vectors, and he died. He died with the technology, adenovirus vector technology. He died in a safety study. He died in a safety study. Others were given the same dose as he, but they did not die. I do not know what their outcomes were, but Jesse Gelsinger died in a safety study using adenovirus vector technology, adenoviruses. He died as a result of this. So this technology is not safe. Adenovirus vector technology is not safe. And this, this, there's a really, this is a very good article here, talks about uh, Jesse, how he wanted to assist. I can just read a little bit. It says, by all accounts, Jesse Gelsinger was a sweet, sharp-witted, if not particularly ambitious kid who loved motorcycles and professional wrestling. In 1999, he was living in Tucson, Arizona with his parents and siblings, attending high school and working part-time as a supermarket clerk. As he got older, he became more independent and like many teens, a touch rebellious. In his case, that led to life-threatening health problems. Anyway, Jesse volunteered to be a part of a study. And he took this, I'm gonna just get right to it. Um, he took this adenovirus um, technology and uh, gene technology. It was a gene therapy and, and it's based upon adenovirus technology, adenovirus vector technology. He took this vaccine or this therapy using the technology, adenovirus vector technology, and he died. He died. Okay, so I'm going to just read this. It says, Jesse was the 18th person to receive the modified virus. Previous patients in the trial had experienced flu-like symptoms, but he had a much worse reaction. Within a day, he became disoriented and showed signs of jaundice. He had an intense inflammatory response and developed a dangerous blood clotting disorder, followed by kidney, liver, and lung failure. Four days after receiving the shot, Jesse was declared brain dead and taken off light support. The team of doctors and nurses caring for him were stunned by his rapid decline and death. The news that an experimental treatment had killed a basically healthy volunteer rocked the field of gene therapy and the broader world biological research. News coverage portrayed the trial researchers as over-eager over and under-cautious, taking shortcuts and disregarding rules meant to protect the people in their care. The death is the latest in a series of setbacks for a promising approach that has so far failed to deliver its first cure and that has been criticized as moving too quickly from the laboratory bench to the bedside, the Washington Post reported in the first of many articles about Jesse's death and the ensuing crises it set off. 
Jesse Gelsinger died from adenovirus vector technology. He died from this technology. And this same technology, this adenovirus vector technology is now being used in COVID vaccines. Here's an article. Adenoviral, an adenoviral vector-based COVID-19 vaccines associated cerebral venous sinus thrombosis. Are those adverse events related to the formation of neutrophil extracellular traps? In March and April 2021, several countries temporarily suspended vaccinations with adenoviral vector-based COVID-19 vaccines. Concerns of national regulators particularly regarded very rare cases of cerebral venous sinus thrombosis after immunization with this type of vaccine. What is cerebral venous thrombosis? Cere and this is coming from the John Hopkins Medicine. What is cerebral venous sinus thrombosis? Cerebral venous si sinus thrombosis occurs when a blood clot forms in the brain's venous sinuses. This prevents blood from draining out of the brain. As a result, blood clots may break and leak blood into the brain tissue, forming a hemorrhage. Here's a thrombosis, th thrombosis, thrombocytopenia from the CHAD. I'm saying this CHAD because that's what it kind of looks like. COVID-19 vaccine. Now, this is also an adenovirus vaccine. We report finding five patients who presented with venous thrombosis and thrombocytopenia seven to 10 days after receiving the first dose of the CHAD0X one COVID-19 adenoviral vector vaccine against coronavirus disease 2019, COVID-19. The patients were healthcare workers who were 32 and 54 years of age. All the patients had high levels of antibodies to platelet factor four polyanion complexes. However, they had no previous exposure to heparin. Because the five cases occurred in a population of more than 130,000 vaccinated persons, we propose that they, they represent a rare vaccine-related variant of spontaneous heparin-induced thrombocytopenia that we refer to as vaccine-induced immune thrombotic thrombocytopenia. Patient one was a 37-year-old woman with headaches that developed one week after vaccination with the CHAD vaccine. At presentation to the emergency department the next day, she had fever and persistent headaches. She was found to have severe thrombocytopenia. Computed topography of the head showed thrombosis in the left transverse and sigmoid sinuses. Because of the low platelet count, a reduced dose of daughter parent was given. The next day, her clinical condition deteriorated. A new CT scan showed a massive cerebral hemorrhage and an edema in the posterior fossa. She was treated with platelet transfusion and decompressed craniectomy. During surgery, massive and uncontrolled edema developed. The patient died on day two after surgery. This vaccine, this CHAD vaccine right there. That's what I'm calling it, a CHAD vaccine. See, that is a that is an adenovirus vector vaccine. It's the technology. Adenovirus vector technology is deadly. How do we know it's deadly? Because Jesse Gelsinger died from the use of this adenovirus vector technology in September of 1999. What changed? Jesse Gelsinger has passed away because of 
this uh, adenovirus vector technology. Here's another person who has died from this adenovirus vector technology. Patient two was a 42-year-old woman who had headaches one week after vaccination with this CHAD vaccine, which is an adenovirus vector technology. Her condition worsened rapidly and she presented with reduced consciousness at presentation to the emergency department three days later. Her platelet count was whatever. And we just go down here, the platelet count increased thereafter. However, the patient died after two weeks in intensive care from increased intracranial pressure and severe cerebral hemorrhage infarction on day 15. Jesse Gelsinger died from this vaccine technology. Adenovirus vector technology is deadly. How do we know? Jesse Gelsinger died during a safety uh, trial for this adenovirus vector technology. He died in a safety trial, in a safety study. He died. This technology, adenovirus vector technology is dangerous. Why? Jesse Gelsinger died from it. Um, the, the AstraZeneca vaccine is an adenovirus vector vaccine. The Janssen & Janssen is an adenovirus vector vaccine. This technology, adenovirus vector technology, is dangerous. It is extremely dangerous. How do we know? Jesse Gelsinger died in a safety study. He died in a safety study testing the technology, adenovirus vector technology. He died in a safety study testing adenovirus vector technology. It is dangerous. The Norwegian Danish study of rare side effects in connection with the AstraZeneca vaccination published. This is June 5th of 2021. Together with researchers in Denmark, the Norwegian Institute of Public Health has studied the extent of side effects associated with the AstraZeneca vaccine. The study shows an increased rate of rare but serious blood clots in the brain and venous blood clots. Following the initial reports of rare side effects after vaccination with the AstraZeneca vaccine, Vaxivira, a registry, a registry study was initiated quickly. The study includes over 281,000 people who have received this vaccine in Norway and Denmark. It is the first study to systematically investigate the occurrence of side effects in the cardiovascular system after vaccination. This is a comprehensive study that has been conducted quickly and with high quality. The excellent collaboration with Danish researchers has been of vital importance. Department, of, Department Director of the Norwegian Institute of Public Health. Side effects in the first 28 days after vaccination studied with data from health registries. All hospital visits were mapped for 281,000 264 people aged between 18 and 65 years old who had been vaccinated with the AstraZeneca vaccine. For each diagnosis, the number of observed cases among those vaccinated was compared with the number expected in the general population. The results showed that there were increased rates of venous blood clots in the brain, cerebral venous thrombosis in the first 28 days after vaccination. The researchers found that one additional case occurred for every 40,000 vaccinated. The risk of venous thrombosis, blood clots, and dinner was also increased by about one additional case for every 9,000 vaccinated. There was no increase in blood clots in the arteries or in the incidence of heart attacks or strokes. The incidence of hemorrhages and low platelet counts was also slightly increased. Although the risk of side effects has increased. The number of events found in the registry is low. The risk of each the risk of each individual person who has been vaccinated is therefore still considered to be low. Norway and Denmark 
have good health registers registries that are of high quality and updated. We are therefore in a privileged position of having continuous access to current, reliable, and privacy-protected knowledge about the effect and side effects after vaccination. Such studies are important to confirm or disprove suspected adverse reaction signals from spontaneous adverse event reports. Reliable data about the background occurrence of the relevant conditions are important for putting the findings in context. Use of vaccines must be based on overall assessments. The results from the work have been shared continuously with the Norwegian, Danish, and international authorities and were included in their assessment about the use of the AstraZeneca vaccine. There is no contradiction between our findings and the European Medicine Agency's assessment of the vaccine. Although rare, severe side effects can occur. The EMA has stated that the overall benefit of the vaccine outweighs the risk. Glug points out that the COVID-19 is a severe disease and each country must therefore make their own assessment of the benefits of the vaccine compared to the risk of possible side effects. The assessment must be based on the situation in each country, such as the number of cases of severe side effects, the degree of control of the epidemic, and the access to alternative vaccines. On March 11, 2021, the Norwegian Institute of Public Health decided to temporarily pause Vaccination with the AstraZeneca vaccine in Norway. The decision was made after reports of severe cases internationally and a death in Denmark following vaccination. During the pause, there were also reports of similar cases and four deaths in Norway. Cerebral venous thrombosis is a prominent feature of the new syndrome known as vaccine-induced immune thrombotic thrombopenia, VITT. This syndrome includes other severe side effects such as large blood clots and veins from the gastrointestinal tract, liver, and spleen. In this study, both thrombosis, blood clots, and thrombocytopenia, low, blood, low platelet count, were diagnoses, were diagnoses that were frequently found among vaccinated people, but this study has not studied VITT directly. Following an overall assessment, the Norwegian Institute of Health has re recommended not to use the AstraZeneca vaccine in the Norwegian Coronavirus Immunization Program. The government will make the final decision on further use. Coronavirus vaccination has continued since March 11th using COVID-19 vaccines from BioNTech, Pfizer, and Moderna. First deliveries of Norway donated COVID-19 vaccines to COVAX. Norway donates first doses to COVAX with first shipments arriving in Nicaragua and Uganda on July 30th. In total, Norway has pledged 5 million doses to COVAX as well as US 141 million in funding. Geneva, July 30th, 20, July 2021. The first deliveries from a pledge of 5 million doses to be denoted, to be donated to COVAX by Norway have arrived with 36,480 doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine delivered to Nicaragua and 128,640 doses of AstraZeneca vaccine delivered to Uganda. The, these Norwegian donations comes on top of the NOK. Okay, I want us to stop right here and just go back over what I've just said. And can you see the unethicalness here? This young man, Jesse Gelsinger, died as a result of adenovirus vector technology. He died in a safety study 
our government has created a denovirus vector vaccine, Chad, that is causing blood clots. It says here in March, uh, in April uh, 2021, several countries temporarily suspend vaccination with adenovirus vector based COVID vaccines. Concerns of national regulators, particularly regarding very rare cases of cerebral venous sinus thrombosis. People are dying from this technology. He died from this technology. Jesse Gelsinger died from this technology and the COVID vaccines based on adenovirus vector technology are dangerous. They are extremely dangerous and deadly. And this has to be known by the food and FDA, the National Institute of Health. Je Jesse Gelsinger died from adenovirus vector technology. It's the technology. The adenovirus vector technology is a very dangerous technology. It should not be used in a vaccination program. We are we have uh, the Johnson and Johnson vaccine is available to children. We know that this vaccine technology, adenovirus vector technology, adenovirus vector technology is dangerous. I'll just leave it there.